Hello there, my beautiful cherubs. It's a great day for learning, and today we're going to learn about the MLA Works Cited process. Now, you may remember we've talked about the MLA before, and what it stands for is the Modern Language Association. The Modern Language Association is basically a bunch of people who make sure that when you and other students are writing important essays and papers and research, that they give credit to the sources they use. So basically, we don't want to plagiarism because we get into trubbizzle. So the MLA Works Cited page is a very, very important page in any writing that you do where you use outside sources. So basically, that would include your research papers and your argument papers specifically. But there may be other examples as well. Sometimes when you become a more advanced um, literary writer, you might have to source different books, um, like actual classical text that you use. So MLA will come in very handy for you, not just in my class, but in high school and definitely in college. You don't want to ever get in trouble for plagiarizing simply because you didn't understand what it means to cite your sources. So the MLA basically set a series of rules so that when you cite a source, it doesn't look totally different from when somebody else cites a source in another state or another country even. So the MLA is accessible to people in all different countries and all different age levels and all different schools so that everybody can understand how a source is cited and can go into your work cited sheet and actually look up the information and where it came from that you used to write your paper. So today I want to show you what it looks like to actually create a work cited page. I'm just going to show you using two source samples and I hope that you can use it and apply it to your own process for your argument essays that you're writing. So. Step one, super simple, you're gonna open a Google Doc or another Word Doc if you want to, but Google Docs are pretty great. So you open your Google Doc and you put at the top, works, cited, and you want to center it because that's the right thing to do. So I'm going to center my title, works cited. See, it's works with an S because I'm probably going to cite more than one source. Um, you do have an alternative in that you could write bibliography not to be confused with biography, bibliography, which means the same thing. But in most cases, people like to use works cited. You also want to make sure, in addition to centering it, that you've made it bold, Ugh, which I think I did. No, I didn't. No, I did. And centered, and also that it's a normal font. So I'm not asking you to, you know, make it in, I don't know, creepster. There you go. Some of you like to use funny, crazy fonts, and while that's funny and crazy, it's also totally not professional. So for real life, when you're submitting a real paper, which means to me or to any other teacher, you need to use a pretty standard font, which in most cases would be Times New Roman or Arial. So you want it to be size 11 or 12. I've made mine 12, and now that I've centered it, I'm going to go to the next line, and I'm going to start doing things from the left. So I'm moving my alignment for the paper to the left at this point. And um, I'm going to now look at my first source, which is an article called Jen Welter Becomes First Woman to Play in Men's Pro Football League in Contact Position. So I'm researching female football players because I am such a football crazy fan. I just I had to research football. You know, it's my thing. Football. You know, I like to play football on the, the football court because um, I'm so good at football. Uh, so. Anywho, this article looks like it comes, if you look at the top of the page, which is usually where you want to look to start, it looks like it comes from USA Today, which um, you may or may not know is a newspaper. But this is obviously an online copy of the article. And so let's assume I used this article and some information and I quoted it or I referenced something it said in my research paper. So I have to put it in my works cited list. And it is, um, from what I can see, it's a newspaper article. So I'm going to go over to my handy dandy MLA citation guide, which you, lucky enough, have yourselves because I've given it to you. So you're going to turn to that last page or maybe the second to last page, I think it's the last page of that document, and you're going to see that there's this list of different um, you know, ways of citing sources. Um, so you're going to go down and this is a newspaper article, so I'm going to go right here where it says magazine or newspaper article, print, um, and I'm going to use the example to figure out my source. So it looks like the first thing I need is the author, and if I look at the sample, they put the last name and then the comma and then the first name. So I'm going to go in my article, and the author is Nina Mandel. So I'm going to go to my works cited sheet, and I'm going to do Mandel, comma, Nina, and I have to unbold it, I forgot. And so that's part one. So Mandel, comma, Nina, and then a period. You want to make sure you pay really close attention to commas and periods. I know it sounds really stupid and minor, but it's kind of a big part of the MLA rules, so you want to make sure you do that properly. 
So next I need to put the title of the article in quotation marks. So you can see that right here. There's this called Martin History Revisited. My title is like 50 million years long and it is Jen Welter Becomes First Woman. Okay, Jen Welter Becomes First Woman to play, play something in men's pro football. Now I want to always check and make sure I'm writing it properly. So I just wanted to check right there to make sure that there wasn't a dash right here between pro and football, because you want to make sure it's exactly the same way it's titled in the original source. So pro football league in contact position, whatever that means. And then, oh no, you can't see it because I made it go. There we go. So Jen Walter becomes first woman to play in men's pro football league in contact position, period, quotation just like in the sample right here. So there's his Martin History Revisited period quotation. Then you've got the magazine or newspaper name italicized. So as I mentioned to you before, the magazine or newspaper name in this case is USA Today with a period at the end, and I'm going to italicize it. There we go, okay. And then next up, it wants the date, and then when it says date, they mean date of publication. So if I go into the article, I can see that it was published on February 16th, 2014 at 1227. That's my birthday! So February 16th, 2014. So that's not my birthday, 1227 is my birthday. But, so I'm gonna put in the date, and if you notice here, the way they format the date is a little different than what you might be used to. So in this case, they use, um, let's see, July 2009, or if you have an actual official date like this one below, 14 September 2009. So it's the day, the month, and then the year. So I'm gonna do that, 14 February, is that right? 14 February, no, 16 February, and then 2014. So you wanna make sure you put in the date in that format with the period after. And then, we only have one more thing, which is uh, format. And by format, they mean, did you read this in your newspaper while sitting at your dinner table and drinking coffee and you know, opening up an actual piece of gray paper that you got on your lawn that morning? Or did you look it up on the internet? Most of the time, choice two. So in this case, I found it online. I'm gonna write online. If I found it in an article at my table, in my actual Wall Street Journal or USA Today or whatever, I would write print just like that. But in this case, we're talking online source, so it's going to be online. Now, what I have to do next is I have to make sure that since my source is more than one line long, that I indent any lines after the first one. So to do that on Google Docs, you go to the very beginning of the first line, or sorry, of the second line, and then you press enter, and nothing happens, but then when you press tab, it indents it for you. And that's what's called a hanging indent. I also want to make sure I have a space between works cited and my first source. So, that's my first option. That's for this newspaper article. Pretty straightforward and simple. Then I have a YouTube video. Female running back makes history in pro football game. What up? Super cool. And there's all this crazy stuff down here and it looks wacky and I don't know how I'm going to source it. Oh my gosh, what am I going to do? So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to look at video or movie. And it says on DVD or VHS or online. And obviously my video is online. And they kindly gave a sample down here that is from YouTube. So I see how that works. So I need to first write specific contributor. So let's see if I can find a specific contributor. Um, let's see, published on February 18th, 2014. Oh wow, it was only two days after the other thing I just read. Um, and it looks like the best kind of source I can find here is this Buzz60. I don't see an actual individual's name. So in this case, what I want to do is I want to go into my sources and I want to type Buzz60. Now, let's think about this. I could put that source, I know the first thing I'm gonna write in that source is gonna be Buzz60, which starts with B, and then I have Mandel, Nina, which starts with M, and your works cited sheet always needs to be alphabetized by the first word of each source. So I'm gonna put this source above the other one. I'm gonna write Buzz60, just like that. I know it looks weird, but that's what they're looking for. Then you're gonna put the title of the video. In this case, Female Running Back Makes History in Pro Football Game. And it looks like they put the title in italics in this case. So, Female Running Back Makes Something, Makes History in Pro Football Game. History, let's go, in Pro Football Game. And then I wanna italicize that. And it looks like I think there's a period at the end too. Let's check on that. Yes, okay. Then you're going to write publisher or distributor. Ooh, okay, so I think I made a mistake. So I think the publisher or distributor would be 
buzz 60. So maybe that means that um, there is no author. Now I think if there's no author, you have to... Do, do, do. <laughs> All right, let me look into this because I think I know there's a way to do this and I'm forgetting what it is. Um, I think that what you're going to do is you're just going to skip oh wait here we go online source no author or page number if the author is not given use the verb okay so looks to me like there is not a specific contributor so we're actually just going to start with our title just like that so female running back makes history in you in pro football game then we're going to put buzz 60 as our publisher or distributor just like in this sample it's harvard university then we're going to put the year which was it said it was 2014 so 2014 period nice and simple um, then you are going to put the website or database, which in this case is YouTube. So you're just going to, just like it's written online with a YouTube, no space, and that is going to be italicized. And um, so you want to make sure you do that. And then you also want to credit the fact that you saw this on the internet. So you're going to write that it is in web format, W-E-B, period. Then last thing is date of access, which is today. Today is the 19th of February. No, it's not. It's the 19th of April. So 19 April 2015, period. So we now have a very useful and informative works cited sheet. And the way you can kind of measure it is, first of all, you can go back into your citation guide and see if you did it properly according to the rules they're giving you. But you can also look at it and say, would I be able to find the information that this person sourced? If, I, if this is all the information that you had, in a person's works cited sheet. Would you be able to find that video? And I think you absolutely could. Pretty darn easily, in fact. Same goes for this one. That's what the purpose of your works cited sheet is, so that I can go on and I can see, oh, Emily used this, or Miles used this source, and then I can actually look it up and see what exactly Miles was looking at, and what exactly Emily watched on that video, so that I can then verify that you're being honest, and that you haven't plagiarized. That's what it's all about young children, beautiful people. So I don't know if you're watching this in my presence or if you're watching it and then coming to see me tomorrow, but regardless, I think you're beautiful. I love you all dearly and I'm very excited to see your work cited sheets made perfectly. Lots of love from me to you. The end.